Today I'm uh, going to present on a recent work named Elmatic um, in Neural Architecture Search Algorithm by uh, Large Language Models and Quality Diversity uh, Optimization. Um, I would like to thank my uh, co-authors, uh, Sam Earl and Professor Julian Togelius from New York University and Dr. Stephen James and uh, Professor Christopher Cleghorn from uh, University of the Witwatersrand, South Africa. So let's get into it. Um, so what is uh, neural architecture search or uh, commonly known as NAS? Uh, NAS is a subfield of automated machine learning, which is uh, a uh, a part of a subfield of machine learning where you have to um, where the the algorithm uh, does everything end to end for you um, from uh, in some cases data extraction to uh, do data pre-processing, feature engineering, uh, applying uh, uh, the right machine learning algorithm, uh, hyperparameter uh, tuning, and everything. So within that field, the as as the name suggests, uh, NAS is where we uh, we search for the right architecture. Um, well, so auto ML uh, usually when people uh, talk about auto ML they would talk more about like classical or or, or shallow machine learning algorithms while uh, sometimes people would prefer auto DL for deep learning but actually it is uh, uh, the same thing um, so um, uh, sorry sorry give me a second Sorry, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Um, all right, so, uh, so yeah, so uh, NASA is around since late uh, 1980s. Um, yeah, the word neuro architecture search was proposed uh, back then, but it got the fame in 2017 with a paper named NAS with reinforcement learning and this is where actually uh, actually it got uh, the deserved fame. Uh, last two years, we saw about one over, over one thousand NAS papers, which um, can uh, go to the latest paper for the from the Hutter Lab um, and uh, look into it. Um, so um, what are the main components for uh, NAS to work uh, effectively? Um, we, uh, we start off with a search space. Now search space could be, could be defined and undefined and it uh, usually depends on the, uh, on the problem we are tackling. And through the search space, we we apply a search uh, strategy on it, which is uh, like commonly we use reinforcement learning algorithms, evolutionary uh, algorithms, and some of the uh, algorithms that are uh, that are particularly curated for uh, for NAS, like uh, like uh, some of the researchers have used hyper networks also known as super networks in this domain where uh, where we only have to train that one network and then it changes the weights uh, uh, to uh, to all the networks that it, uh, it searches for uh, so a search strategy we pick up one search strategy and we then see how we can estimate the performance so usually you have uh, uh, a data set, one of the most common ones are Cypher 10, Cypher 100, ImageNet. So you, uh, you, you would say, all right, 
we are looking for higher accuracy and you could also have a multi-objective um, search where you would say all right uh, we have a higher accuracy and uh, and for example lower flops so uh, so it could be a single objective or multi objective so it's like a loop uh, uh, and it searches till a given number of uh, searches or uh, or till you uh, go uh, reach a threshold for your uh, objectives so uh, yeah this is how normally how you uh, create a uh, NAS algorithm so um, why would you use NAS um, we can design um, neural networks by hand and we have a lot of neural networks that uh, work really good that are designed uh, ourselves but uh, there is a there could be a, uh, a bias in it uh, due to our limited knowledge and uh, and so we are uh, basically not exploring uh, when we are uh, uh, designing by hand uh, so uh, alternatively we uh, we do find good neural networks um, through uh, through automated search for example efficient net and there are many other examples also um, and yeah so uh, so it, it it does like there's no free line so but still um, uh, it uh, it is quite effective yes there's no free line so they they are very expensive uh, you need to search over thousands of architectures um, for example evolutionary algorithms and reinforcement learning algorithms they are really good at exploring but they are very very expensive um, and methods like one shot method hyper networks and super networks they are uh, not very expensive but then they are uh, limited to their exploration abilities um, so our motivation for this uh, is to uh, is to have uh, have both like exploration and also uh, also not to be very expensive um, and uh, yeah when we talk about LLMs so uh, uh, we usually think that it is expensive and it is but when you are only uh, inferencing them inferring them what happens is that we are we only need uh, uh, need very little time for that so we can tackle that with LLMs and quality diversity optimization which we'll see in a little while um, and it is also and the elmatic itself is actually uh, an evolutionary algorithm but it takes away the expensive part uh, out of that so we we uh, came a long way in generating LLMs we um, we have uh, LLMs that can produce uh, that have incredible code generating uh, abilities. Um, we have um, alpha code that can code on competition level. We have uh, uh, we have code llama and code gen that uh, that uh, uh, create good results uh, for controllable code generation and uh, it's not that we only are working on Python and like uh, like uh, known languages mostly known in uh, AI community but we have like Verilog uh, and all of those hardware description languages and uh, our fellow researchers have extended code generating elements to towards that also so we have uh, we have definitely a lot of uh, like uh, a way to cover but uh, we came 
quite far. So we, uh, we, uh, as far as you know, we are like uh, the third ones to use uh, LLMs for NAS. Previously, uh, there is a paper known as evil prompting uh, that uh, that, uh, that as far as we know, uh, were the first ones to use LLMs uh, for NAS. Um, uh, they have good results, but they use a 62 billion uh, parameter palm for uh, for the purpose. Similarly, the other work uh, is more of a uh, theoretical work where the CFGPT4 can be used uh, as uh, for for NAS. So yeah, so this uh, this made us thought that yes, we want to uh, use. Um, uh, LLMs, but we want to use comparatively smaller uh, LLM to do the job. And this is where quality diversity algorithm helps us achieve the goal. So what are uh, QD algorithms, quality diversity algorithms? Uh, they are evolutionary algorithms uh, where, where you have to uh, the, the goal for it is to find high quality and highly diverse individuals or solutions. What well, normally what happens in evolutionary algorithm is that you have a population of solutions. And for example, you are uh, in, in a, in a uh, NAS perspective, you'd have like population of neural, uh, neural networks and then you would apply uh, evolutionary operators like uh, mutations uh, and crossover operators and you would um, and this is like uh, quite a bit of randomness in it and eventually but because of uh, having designed fitness functions uh, it reaches to a good solution uh, but eventually it is quite expensive and you have to search over a lot of individuals because mutation operators and uh, crossover operators can be uh, very expensive. So quality diversity algorithm uh, in its raw form is also uh, expensive, but comparative to uh, other evolutionary algorithms, uh, it is not uh, that expensive. So uh, for an overview, I've listed a uh, a link for uh, the website, which was created by one of the uh, first few researchers uh, to research on this domain. Um, yeah. So we have a well-known quality diversity algorithm called multi-dimensional archive of uh, phenotypic elites also known as map elites. So this will give you a, uh, um, uh, a good concept for the algorithm. Uh, it usually is uh, somehow the same, um, uh, same concept behind it. And here and there, people have uh, changed it. Uh, so we have a, uh, we will have a, a collection, or you can also call it archive. Uh, and the archive uh, is where we store our uh, our solutions, our individuals. And each of them uh, is supposed to be uh, of a high quality and, uh, and diverse from others. So what happens is that you randomly select a, uh, an individual um, there are many uh, researchers over the selection, and uh, 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 but normally random selection does work really good. And then you have mutation. You have to do random mutation. You can do uh, different types of mutations, and also uh, you can also um, perform crossover. You can select crossover or uh, or mutation. Uh, via some probability, and then 
prepares you in case of um, neural network, you would train it, then you would evaluate it on your uh, uh, on your data, on your test data, and then you would uh, you would send back to uh, the archive. Where what will happen is that it uh, it will have like um, uh, you call it um, niches. So you would have uh, uh, you would have cells in it and. Uh, and if there, for example, there is a, uh, an individual already in the cell, the the new individual that comes will see that uh, if the fitness is better than the previous individual, so we'll replace that individual. And uh, and if uh, if there is like a, a, an empty cell, uh, and so we would we would place it place the individual in that cell. And over the time, over the iterations or in evolutionary algorithms, you call it generations. Over the generations, you would uh, you would see that you would find uh, high quality individuals that, are, uh, uh, that have uh, quite a bit of diversity in them. So eventually, college diversity algorithm does uh, cuts down the population size. Uh, if compared to other evolutionary algorithms, uh, but still uh, 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 is somewhat expensive. So um, this is like practically uh, what happens uh, in a, a Mapleach algorithm. It's, this is the archive we have. Uh, we are training a, a a robot to walk and and different cells will have uh, controllers for the robot uh, uh, that would have different behaviors. Each one uh, probably in the red cell you, would be higher, uh, higher quality and on the edges uh, would be lower quality. But this, is, this only depends on the case. Uh, it could be very different. Could be illuminated, you know, we call it illuminate, illuminating the search space. So it could be, uh, uh, could be lower lower illumination, higher illumination. Could be uh, uh, depending on your um, uh, your uh, your uh, objective. So now, what is LLMatic? We we uh, did now we have looked uh, into like what is NAS, then uh, LLMs, and uh, and the college diversity algorithms. LLMs and quality diversity algorithm uh, makes LLMatic. So what we did is that we have a two archive uh, QD algorithm. There are some researchers where they have used uh, two archives and two populations uh, has been there for ages. Uh, in, in evolutionary algorithms, for example, uh, they uh, they co-evolve each other. Could be competitive co-evolution, where they compete with each other and uh, gets better, or it could be cooperative co-evolution that where they help each other to evolve. So, we're here. We have a cooperative kind of setting. And and we have one archive where we store um, where we store uh, prompts, uh, and the other archive is where we store uh, neural networks. Um, yeah. So um, what happens is that we okay. I actually missed one essential point here. Um, we we can see that this is two-dimensional uh, archive. We can have two-dimensional, three dimensions, but we don't want to have more than that. Uh, we bring our behavior space, we call it behavior space, or uh, and, uh, and the dimensions itself are called behavior descriptors. For example, uh, in our case, we'll have archive of neural networks, one dimension would be uh, floating point operations per second, and other dimension would be width to depth ratio. So we want a 
very low dimension space uh, where uh, and this helps us um, find the diver find the diverse uh, individuals so we use a cogen 6 billion uh, llm for our mutations and crossover operators uh, and uh, we uh, we use um, uh, a uh, a version of Mapleids known as Synchroidal uh, Vernoi Tessellations. Uh, it's quite similar to uh, Mapleids, it's just that uh, in Mapleids we have discrete space and uh, and we keep our individuals in that discrete space. But in uh, CVT uh, Mapleids, we use CVT, uh, which is already an algorithm that uh, creates synchroids and then uh, uh, creates specific um, continuous um, uh, spaces or tessellations for uh, uh, for the individuals to be. In. So what happens is that it would uh, it would uh, be more intelligent partition of the arch uh, archive and then so it, it is not discrete it is continuous so we can actually have uh, high dimension uh, uh, behaviors with high dimensions into into uh, into these uh, uh, these archives such as neural networks they are uh, they are of high dimensions they vary we when uh, there has been a lot of research and directly using mapleids uh, it doesn't scale uh, to neural networks so they use cvt mapleids over there so um uh, a flow for our uh, our elmatic i hope it's not too small um but what happens is that initially just like any other uh, quality diversity algorithm we have uh, we have one initial network and we want to uh, want to uh, create random networks via that initial network and uh, to fill in the archive uh, what happens in a quality diversity algorithm is that you uh, you do want to um, uh, fill in to some extent for example you have hundred niches 100 cells and you say all right randomly i will fill five or ten percent of my uh, of my archive so that is a hyperparameter to choose and so we do that we uh, do mutation of random props we have a set of prompts for our algorithm we just choose randomly and apply it to and uh, to the initial network we uh, uh, we see if we can uh, store uh, those networks in network archive and uh, and in prompt archive so prompt archive uh, is very much related to network archive and what happens is that if uh, if we are our network individual uh, or neural network gets a place in the archive then we say that all right the the prompt itself has uh, has a fitness of a rolling fitness of positive one otherwise uh, uh, we 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 say the fitness is zero so eventually we uh, we get varying fitnesses and uh, from the archive from the prompt archive we get uh, we get uh, better prompts that uh, that evolve the networks better what we do is that for our uh, for our um, uh, our evolution to happen, we take random networks uh, from the archive, uh, network archive, and we take curious prompt. Now, curious prompt uh, is already a researched uh, topic curiosity, uh, which uh, what happens in this is that if there, uh, if uh, in our case, if the neural network that has been added. Uh, improves the over uh, the fitness on that uh, cell then we say all right the uh, uh, we give a 
QS, uh, uh, we add to its QS score. And, uh, and if, if uh, it doesn't happen, it's, uh, it uh, has been added, but it doesn't increase the overall fitness, then we do is all right. Uh, we, we would give a small regret to that curious score. And if uh, the prompt creates a, a, an untrainable network, we would, uh, we would uh, give it a larger regret. And so uh, this happens uh, over set, uh, set generations and uh, and eventually we have, uh, we'll, we'll stop after a number of generations. Um, so our mutations would look something like this, a, a network, and then we have, um, uh, we have uh, our prompt uh, that would, uh, that would eventually um, procedurally create the network. Um, why we follow a procedural generation, we, uh, um, Professor uh, Kenneth o. Stanley, who uh, created the NEAT algorithm, the revolution of augmenting topologies, uh, proved that procedural generation leads to uh, leads to better individuals, uh, and uh, and uh, so we uh, we do know that uh, LLMs have the uh, capabilities to generate the whole network uh, code in one go, but uh, we want it to generate procedurally to find better networks. And a subset of the prompts that we use um, would be something like this, could be basically be um, anything and we could generalize it to such an extent that you could have uh, uh, you could use it for any uh, uh, any scenario, any data set, um, and then we, for crossover prompts, we uh, we take take two uh, networks, and for crossovers, what we do is that we uh, we take um, uh, we take a network from the from our archive, and we we uh, we take um, neighboring networks from from the from the archive because those networks will have a uh, a similar number of flops and with with to depth ratio and uh, and would mean that uh, a crossover uh, operation uh, would not break it. There are less chances uh, to get a broken network. Um, then our uh, experimental setup, um, we use Cypher 10 as our, uh, as our um, data set. Um, we want to show uh, the capability of LLMatic and uh, Cypher 10 uh, is best suited for it. Then we um, we do an extensive ablation study because uh, why not? Like uh, every ablation study over here raises a question: Why would you do that? Like uh, why would you use crossover? Why not only mutation? So we take in mutation on the elematic, then crossover only. Then why do you have both archives? And then you you do want to have a random uh, baseline in it, um, so could definitely be called an ablation because uh, why do you need evolution? Why can't you just uh, generate uh, the own network directly? So, so yeah, we uh, set up our our, uh, our experiment in this way, and then we uh, we know that efficient net is state of the art and with a lot of limited resources we, we see that Elmatic, uh, I hope it's clear, uh, it, it reaches uh, towards 
the state of the art. State of the art is a test accuracy of 98, um, 98 but something percent, and ours reach about 96 percent. And then we 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 can see uh, that all other ablation uh, are 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 not as good as um, as Alumatic. Um and we uh, we ran this over 10 seeds so uh, to confirm the uh, statistical importance of our results um a random generation we can see that it's random sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad and uh, this is how uh, it is with llms right now in the cogen is a bit older LLM. Newer LLMs should do better, but still, we do believe that random uh, generation uh, cannot get you uh, a high-performing uh, architecture all the time. Um, so, the resulting archives from the right we have uh, we have a network archive. We see that it uh, it fills a hundred percent archive. Our archives are we have 100 niches in both of the archives. And that means that after our evolution, we have uh, we have 100 individuals. And to note that uh, about like more than 20 individuals perform, uh, uh, perform like nicely uh, with high quality. And all of them are, uh, are somewhat diverse to each other. So, uh, so two of our behavioral uh, descriptors that, that we think that can be generalized to any uh, any case, any any data set, uh, is uh, a width to depth ratio, one of the more important things, uh, and uh, and flops. So we had initial uh, experiments with different uh, behavioral descriptors, and we. Uh, we use parameters and all of that, but uh, 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 from our experiments, it seemed like floating point operations per second would be uh, would be a better uh, way to know uh, a way to know how uh, how a network performs than the number of parameters. Um, so um, so the yellow one. Uh, are more performing and the darker it gets is uh, other ones uh, that perform less uh, and we find like we find um, uh, the ones with lower flops and closer to width to depth ratio closer to uh, closer to can say uh, say like uh, equal weight to depth which is which is obviously rare, but still we have we find uh, we find good networks over there, and we uh, we find networks in in, in like normal way to depth ratio. So uh, this behavioral descriptor uh, should be we should be able to apply it to any other uh, uh, any other. Uh, Benchmark. So, on the left we have prompts where uh, we we call it prompt individual, which has prompts and the temperatures. Um, so, um, in our whole twenty generations that we run our experiment for, the prompt archive does not fill up hundred percent, but uh, we say we see that we have. Uh, more, uh, uh, more uh, uh, networks being generated uh, with better fitness uh, on the higher side of temperature, and and the the lower prompts prompts encoded directly to uh, categorical encoding. So these are the prompts. The prompts that are working better are the ones that. Uh, simply say add a layer to improve, add delete a layer to improve, improve rather than 
uh, specifically telling add a convolutional layer or add a fully connected layer to improve. So the, th those ones are uh, performing better uh, in our experimentation. Um, then we have uh, trainable networks. Because in evolutionary algorithms, uh, a lot of uh, individuals are broken. We have a lot of research on how uh, to do crossover or mutation that does not break the individual. And eventually we see that mutation uh, is, um, uh, is a better, um, uh, a better uh, operator in this scenario. Crossover would break uh, more uh, networks, but eventually we do also see that uh, as we go on, the the, uh, the effect of procedural generation, uh, uh, procedural search for uh, the network actually increases the percentage that is on the uh, y-axis percentage of uh, trainable networks, even if it is more percent to for the more more probability for the crossover and less probability for the mutation uh, or, uh, uh, or otherwise. Uh, but eventually we see that uh, mutation um, is something that uh, provides more exploration and lesser uh, broken networks. So uh, some of the networks that uh, that was searched. Um, we can see on the right, we can see uh, uh, it actually added LSTM also because we had one of the prompting at a recurrent uh, layer which uh, does not perform really well, uh, obviously. But uh, we have deeper networks uh, with width, we find. Um, of, uh, find um, like uh, residual connections. We uh, we uh, we find uh, normalizations, dropouts, all of that. So uh, so basically, it explores and uh, 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 to to an extent where it can find a diverse individual that is. Uh, performing nicely, um, yeah. So uh, now to conclude, uh, we uh, in our experiments we find highly competitive and diverse neural networks. We uh, Elmatic takes only two thousand searches to find the networks. The two thousand seems big, but just for a, a comparison. Uh, efficient net finds more uh, searches for more than 8,000 uh, neural networks. 8,000 is uh, and the point where it starts, where uh, where mobile net is created, and then it starts after that. So more than 8,000 searches, and this is a uh, a, a drastic improvement in uh, in the number of searches. So. We do know that uh, can be improved. For example, better uh, co-generating elements, state-of-the-art ones uh, like code llama, for example, uh, can be used in place of uh, of code gen. Um, we our motivation was uh, to have a uh, a comparatively smaller language model uh, and not uh, not like 50, 60 billion or 100 billion uh, parameter neural network and uh, language model. And uh, and so we, uh, when we improve it, we want to do it with a smaller language model. Uh, prompt archive uh, currently has uh, been encoded categorically the prompts and bringing Prompts into uh, into latent space would definitely benefit. The prompt archive would improve the overall 
algorithm. We we do need we do know that uh, Elmatic needs more uh, benchmarks, which is an ongoing uh, process. We do have results, but uh, unpublished, so we <laughs> don't want to discuss them. Um, and um, and it needs to be applied for neural evolution uh, and reinforcement learning uh, uh, tasks because uh, the way it uh, uh, applies, uh, the way it um, is this has been designed, neural evolution uh, is very much possible with it. Yeah. So thank you very much for this uh, incredible opportunity for me to talk over here and discuss uh, our new uh, new paper. Uh, I'm very honored to be here. Uh, if anyone like to collaborate in this direction, uh, it's my email address, which is mju2221 at nyu.edu. You can reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn and Twitter as well. Uh, I am very much interested in open-ended learning as well, uh, which is my PhD direction. So uh, yes, looking forward to collaborate and questions. Sure. I'm a yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, yeah. Like uh, when you uh, showed the example, uh, the starting point for the neural network was very simple, right? So do you think that this can be improved if we have like a better start for the neural network, the initial network? Like it's very simple. Maybe, you know, we can show the prompt some complex examples so it can mm -hmm. move towards few short learning for the LLM. So do you think that can improve the network that has been discovered by LLMATIC? Mm -hmm. So um, so there's been research on it. Uh, the same uh, professor, uh, Kenneth Stanley, they have researched on it, on the fact that starting simple leads to better networks starting uh, starting with complex networks uh, would uh, would actually limit the exploration ability because now for example you started uh, with uh, just let's say inception like architecture now uh, now when LLM tries to add uh, layers it is bigger chance to uh, to create a broken network. And so uh, it, it, it is counterintuitive, but uh, it leads to, uh, leads to more searches, probably, uh, probably it would lead to, um, uh, to results that are not as good as, uh, as otherwise, um, which has been uh, researched in, uh, in quite detail in, uh, by, uh, by a paper called Evolution of uh, Neural Networks by uh, uh, Evolution of Neural Networks uh, Through Augmenting Topologies by uh, Professor uh, Ken Stanley. All right. Good yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Uh, also, in the prompt archive, uh, do you think that we can use a little bit more uh, clever prompting techniques and maybe you know add some kind of check to make sure that uh, it does not break the network but it the output is better like chain of thought or tree of thought something like that yes yes definitely it's uh, chain of thought uh, idea is good and uh, i believe there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways to improve the prompt archive. Um, yeah, um, in in essence, like uh, only uh, only the latent space would uh, increase uh, increase the effectiveness of the archive. Edit more uh, as as evo prompting uh, does with uh, tells that this. Previous architecture has 
has more uh, has this accuracy you know this number of parameters so uh, try to make uh, an architecture with this accuracy this number of parameters things like that yes definitely it would improve uh, the archive and overall algorithm uh, and maybe uh, you mentioned it, but I missed it. Uh, like, do you also check, uh, so for example, when you are doing searches for each network uh, that is created, you perform uh, some training on that network, like back propagation, or maybe inference to check what is the performance or loss, or that is just checked at the end? Oh, yeah. So uh, I actually missed it. Thank you very much for uh, noticing it. Um, um, so we do training. We uh, after creation, we uh, we do it for fifty epochs uh, of training for each uh, for each network. Uh, this is kind of uh, uh, the go-to epoch number uh, for Cypher ten, and yeah, we, uh, we do. Um, but they are, to avoid that, which definitely becomes more expensive to avoid that, there are benchmarks in uh, NAS, uh, like NAS Bench 101, 201, 301, and all of that for NLP for uh, different tasks, uh, which have queried networks in a tabular form. So you search for a network and then you see if that network is in, uh, is in the data set and what is the accuracy training validation test accuracy. So that reduces the uh, cuts off the path uh, of training. But we do that, yeah. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Mm -hmm. I think we don't have any other questions. So I guess we can end it here. Thank you so much, Mayor. It was really an awesome session. My pleasure. Thank you very much for this opportunity, uh, Ahmed. Uh, it was great talking to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, likewise. All right. Right. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Bye.